Hello and welcome to this video where I'm gonna talk about my top 6 games of 2022. This has been such a weird year for game releases. We had a couple of bangers released in the first 2 months and then we had the longest dry spell I seem to remember in like forever. With just a very few good looking games being released and then come to the last 2 months of the year where pretty much all the games are all released at once. And uh, yeah, so I just, I have not had the time to give all those games the attention they deserve. So who knows, in a few months this list might look a lot different. But for now, this is my current top 6 games of the year. Number 6 Dragon Quest Treasures it is absolutely no secret that I'm a huge Dragon Quest fan, so I always have my eyes out for new releases, whether it be a main game, a remake, or just a spin-off. And Dragon Quest Treasures is a spin-off that takes us back into the wonderful world, and in familiar company with a young Eric and Mia who both appeared in Dragon Quest XI. In this game we are hunting for treasures, which will improve our base of operation, and helping us are the iconic monsters who you recruit and use their abilities not only in combat, but also in traversing the strange new world. Hunting for treasures and recruiting monsters is super addictive, especially when some of the treasures are references to previous games. The combat of the game is rather lacklusting, if I'm being honest, but it's still a game I have a hard time putting down when I first start playing it. Number 5 God of War Ragnarok We continue the epic journey of Kratos and his son Andreas in this long awaited sequel in their fights against the Norse gods. This is a story driven hack and slash game that a lot of people will call a masterpiece. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a great game deserving of praise. The story is great and some of the visuals are amazing. Not a whole lot has changed from the previous game, the combat is very similar and so are a lot of the puzzles. The game felt quite drawn out and at some point I just wanted it to be over. The combat started to feel like work and eventually I would dread running into enemies, which is why I just can't rank it any higher on my list. Number 4 Bayonetta 3 now this is a spectacular hack and slash game. Bayonetta 3 brings that fast paced combat and the epic scale monsters that I enjoy. Combat at its core feels similar to previous games in the franchise, but it brings a new element with monster summons. No longer are those giant helpies just a part of a cool finishing move, now you can control them during battle and it gives you an enormous edge against your enemies. The game also has a lot of new weapons that feels very different from each other. All weapons are accompanied by a new monster for you to control and a beast form for you to transform into. The story is kinda so-so, it has never been the main reason to play previous games, and continues with this one, but I will say traveling through multiverses and seeing different versions of Bayonetta is pretty cool. You also meet a fun new character named Viola, who we get to play as for some of the levels, and she plays a little different, not drastically different but enough to feel like her own character. You can also play as Jean in some of the levels that are in the 2D side-scroller style, which if I'm being honest, I could have been without, but they're very short so it never gets too bad. It is impressive what the developers could do with the Switch, cause the game looks and runs pretty well, but it kinda annoys me that the game is made for the Switch and is stuck on there. A game on a scale like this should be on a more powerful console, instead of the graphically weakest one of the last generation. Number 3 The Quarry Supermassive games are the developers behind one of my favorite games on the PS4, Until Dawn, and these past few years they made games in the Dark Pictures Anthology series, which has pretty much always made my top game of the year list. Uh, unfortunately the devil in me didn't quite make it uh, this year, it felt too much of a downgrade compared to last year's House of Ashes. Luckily we also got The Quarry, a full fledged sequel to Until Dawn, and it was great! This time around we follow a group of young camp counselors who are forced to stay an extra night at summer camp all by themselves, but as the night progresses they realize they are not alone. Weird hillbilly hunters are stalking them in the woods, but there's also something else, something even more monstrous are trying to kill people. It is up to you to either save as many characters as possible or doom them all. The game's setting looks absolutely beautiful and together with its music we are set for an awesome atmosphere. The character's faces however are directly in the uncanny valley and it can be a little distracting at times. Also the dialogue feels quite unrealistic and kind of forced sometimes, and again, with all this game there's gonna be some fake choices that doesn't change anything. But overall I had an awesome time with the quarry and I recommend it to all fans of story during game and horror fans. Number 2 A Plague Tale Requiem a few months after the events of the previous game, we follow Amicia and her brother Hugo in times that at first seems to be good. 
but the supernatural plague that Hugo carries soon hits the surface again, and it brings even more rats and death than ever. In a desperate attempt to find a cure, Amicia is willing to travel across plague-hit lands, sail the sea and find a mysterious island that may hold clues to the origin of the curse. Holy crap, this was an awesome game. The story was compelling and had me hooked. The characters you meet throughout are enjoyable and I really cared about what would happen to them throughout the journey. And I'm probably gonna sound like complete twat saying this, but the ending was brave, dark and beautiful. Gameplay wise it's very similar to the previous game but with a few new elements and everything is just turned up a notch. The events, the dark themes, the brutality and of course the rats. When dealing with the enemies you are still primarily playing it like a stealth game, taking something out one by one out of sight. As the story progresses however you will get equipment and allies that will make the stealth part more forgiving. There are also gonna be puzzle sections where you have to find the right way to traverse through the rat infestation. So please do yourself a favor, play the first game and then play this one, you won't regret it. Number 1 Horizon Forbidden West This is the sequel I've been waiting years for. Horizon Zero Dawn was one of the most unique and beautiful open world games on the PS4 and Horizon Forbidden West is pretty much all I ever wanted in a sequel. New lands to explore and new types of weapon and of course a lot of new mechanical enemies that will challenge you throughout the game. Here we get to explore the Forbidden West, an area often mentioned in the previous game, veiled in mystery, with its own tribes that lives on the land. Despite the first game being one of the prettiest games of its time, you can definitely still see the generational jump to the PS5, especially in the faces. Whereas in the first game, Aloy felt a little stiff, here she really comes around, with many small and big expressions that helps making the character feel alive. Combat is still very fun and I never got tired of it. It is up to you how to approach an enemy. You can also learn about them so you can find out what elemental type of weapons works best on them or where the weak spots are for a massive damage attack. The story is also great and you meet some familiar faces but also a few new ones and all of our closest allies has their own backstory that makes them unique and interesting. Horizon Forbidden West has a little bit for everyone and it is my game of the year. And this has been my top 6 games of the year. As I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of games was released these past 2 or 3 months that I just simply didn't have the time to play. Uh, but I still wanted to make this video while it was still relevant. I know Elden Ring is probably gonna be a lot of people's number 1 game, but I have just never been a fan of the Souls game and I don't really see the appeal of dying all the time. And getting good at it is just something that takes more energy and time than I have. I also played Callisto Protocol which at first I did not enjoy it that much but after a while it really clicked with me and if I had time to play more of it it might even have been on this list. What little I played of Evil West was also fun, it gives me a nostalgic vibe because it feels like a game that was made for the uh, PS2 or PS3 area and um, not trying to be the best thing ever and that should happen more. It's okay if a game releases and it's not trying to be the best, not every game needs to be the best and it's fine if some games are just fine. High on Life was also a game I was looking forward to a lot, but I haven't gone around to play that much of it. Uh, I really like the style of the game, but the humor just falls flat for me and ended up becoming annoying, if I'm being honest. So I can only play for a short burst at a time before I'll have a bad time. And the trend of all the awesome looking games being released at once seems to continue into 2023. In the first two months a ton of awesome looking games are being released uh, and it looks like it's gonna be a banger of a year in the gaming world. And that's it. This is going to be my last video of the year. Uh, if I get it out in time, I might not. It might already be 2023 by now. <laughs> so if you've been sticking through the bad English, you're a real hero. Thanks for watching and have a happy new year. <laughs> that's so dumb.